Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with another episode of Total Breakdown. We've got yet another fantastic battle from the Warhammer Fantasy League today where the Dark Elves of Xiphos face off against the Beastmen of Clashland Soothsayer. If you'd like to keep up to date with the tournament, make sure you follow the link in the description down below. We begin of course with talk of composition and deployment and if it isn't clear right away this battle gets a very wild basically immediately the dark elves are led by none other than malekith atop his cold one and the front line of sorts consists of these dread spears as well as these shades right behind them we have two units of black arc corsairs and they are anti-infantry they'll do pretty well against most mid to low tier beastmen infantry units and on either flank right behind them we have these dread spears and then down the middle we have three units of hargoneth executioners anti-infantry and armor piercing they'll do well against basically all beastmen infantry. Right behind them, we've got these Witch Elves able to inflict the Madness of Cain and cause some rampage among the enemy wherever necessary, while these two units of Cold One Knights at the back will be able to push in and chase after maybe cavalry that have been pinned in place by rampaging or come in for flanking maneuvers of their own, of course. On the other side of the field, as you can see, the Beastmen have a very, very large cavalry contingent led by none other than Morgur the Shadowgave. He is assisted by a Bray Shaman of Beasts on foot, and the front line here consists of these Ungor Spearmen herd here and over here, except these ones have shields, and we also have the Ungor herd here, here, and over here. Right behind them, Gore herd with shields over here, here, and here, able to pour through these gaps and provide some assistance wherever necessary, while we have three units of Senegor with throwing axes, and a unit of Senegor over here as well. So some great skirmishing capabilities, as well as some opportunities to come in for flanking maneuvers again through this giant gap over here. But all the way at the back, we have a pair of Senegor with great weapons tucked in the trees over here, and a unit of Senegor and another unit of Senegor with great weapons tucked away in the trees over here. So very cleverly hidden so they can push in for surprise flanking maneuvers, charge down the middle if necessary, and basically cause a lot of pain and chaos. Now, as you can see, a very crazy deployment from both sides of the field, and already we have some magic going down, and you can see the balance of power as well, very much in favor of those beastmen as this flock of doom is going down on the Harganeth Executioners. Excellent work there, the Harganeth Executioners are very threatening, so might as well get some damage done. And take a look as well at the general width of the deployment from the Dark Elves. If the Beastmen had a Saigor, or if they're going to use magic like Flock of Doom, they're not going to do as much damage as if the Dark Elves had stayed clumped together, very compact in their formation. The Saigor rocks would at most damage one unit, and collateral damage is minimized by creating this widespread deployment. So a very good job there, and you can see Malekith over here pushing forward, maybe looking to get some early damage, and maybe looking to scare that Bray Shaman of Beasts back, and you can see the Bray Shaman of Beasts, having got that Flock of Doom off, decides to pull back into safety while the Senegor with throwing axes are pushing forward, looking for an opportunity to get some damage done, and Malekith does need to be a little careful about those throwing axes, of course, they are armor piercing, they can do a fair bit of damage uh, without taking any of their own. And you can see, take a look at this glorious split over here as the Senegor with throwing axes push off to either side and look for opportunities to get some damage done. Of course, Malekith as well, not really able to close any one of these units down, and the Shades decide to reveal themselves by opening some shots at the Senegor with throwing axes here, but they pull back into some safety, toss some axes into these Cold One Knights, and take a look at the opportunity taken over here. The Senegor with throwing axes see the gap, they push right down this gap, and throw some of their axes as they come in for a nice glorious charge right into these shades trying to get rid of that range support as early as possible at the back here Malekith as well trying to push in for an interception trying to slow these Senegor with throwing axes down but he's just a little too late in come those Senegor with throwing axes with a glorious charge again tossing these guys back tossing these shades back Malekith comes in for a nice rear charge at the same time and take a look at that wonderful use of chill wind in comes the chill wind, does a touch of damage, but more importantly, slows these Senegor with throwing axes down so that these Dread Spears and these Harganeth Executioners who are coming in are able to maybe close that gap. So beautifully done there, great use of that ability, but unfortunately the Senegor with throwing axes are still able to get away despite being slowed down. They're able to just peel away. They've taken a fair bit of damage though, both to health and to morale, and the Dread Spears just not able to close the gap while another flock of doom goes down on the Harganeth Executioners. Again, just reducing their health before lines even come close. Great target selection there, trying to destroy a unit of Harganeth Executioners. On either flank, meanwhile, you can see the Senegor with throwing axes trying to get some work done on these Dread Spears here and over here. But of course, those silver shields on the Dread Spears will do a lot to keep them alive. While Malekith is creeping forward to get some early damage done as the Senegor with throwing axes are pulling back. You can see a Gaze of Malice going down over here, but unfortunately just not doing enough damage to these rather, uh, well incohesive, I guess, units of Gorehurt with shields. So very little damage done to either Senegor with throwing axes or the Gorehurt with shields. And you can see at the same time, the Beastmen are actually pivoting their formation. Now, this might be to just buy some more time for the Senegor with throwing axes on either flank to get a little bit of damage done, or it might be to allow these Senegor with great weapons to have a better avenue of approach. If they stay hidden as the Dark Elves pivot to follow the Beastmen pivot, then the Senegor with great weapons will have a very open 
uh, angle to get into these Hargoneth executioners, for example, or get behind and into these shades. It's another example. So very nice movement there. You can see the entire formation shifting. Malekith needing to be a little hesitant about closing the gap into Morgoth the Shadow Gave because again, those Senegal with throwing axes can cause a fair bit of damage. You can see he's dodging those axes as well as possible. And these Senegal with throwing axes just looking for that opportunity to get some damage done, but need to be wary of these Dread Spears as well. Meanwhile, you can see the front lines are about to engage these Dread Spears quite excellently pulled back as the Ungor herd here about to close the gap into the Dread Spears and the Black Ark Corsairs sent in instead. And the same thing over here as well. These Dread Spears peeled back as the Ungor herd over here about to close the gap and the Hargoneth Executioners instead being sent in. So again, wonderful micromanagement you can see here as these Black Ark Corsairs get that interception in wonderfully. Again, just charging in to these Ungor herd over here, trying to get as much damage done as possible as these Dread Spears pull back into some relative safety. In the middle as well, you can see Malekith here pushing off to the side, trying to provide some assistance while again, these Hargoneth Executioners get that wonderful interception off and cause a lot of damage to the Ungor herd over there. But you can see we have these Shades now firing away as well into the center while the Hargoneth Executioners eat a glorious charge from that Senegor unit there, getting a lot of damage through the Hargoneth Executioners in a terrible position already. The Witch Elves dive in as well, and they get those Senegors rampaging right away, pinning those Senegor in combat as Malekith is currently dealing with Morgoth the Shadow Gave back there as well. And you can see... Now we've got the grand reveal coming in as well. The Senegor with great weapons alongside the Senegor pouring out from the trees. The Cold One Knights over here trying to push in to get some damage done of their own. Well, over here as well, we've got the Senegor with great weapons just looking for an opportunity to dive in while these Dread Spears continue to chase after the Senegor with throwing axes. These Hargoneth Executioners as well pushing in, looking for an opportunity to get involved while the uh, Black Ark Corsairs over here up against the Ungor Spearman Herd will make very quick work of the Ungor Spearman Herd, of course. You can see in the center, we have a little bit of assistance coming in from both sides in terms of magic. We've got Soul Stealer trying to keep Malekith alive and get a lot of damage done to the middle, while at the same time, we also have Flock of Doom going down again, just trying to get damage done to that unit of Hargoneth Executioners and win the center, the absolutely essential center engagement here, just to try and come out on top. And you can see over there, we have a unit of Chaos Spawn coming in as well as a chill win. So a lot of action over here, Chaos Spawn, magic from all sides. We've got these Senegor with throwing axes, diving in to try and provide some assistance against the Black Heart Corsairs over here. And over here, we've got these guys pulling back as the Cold One Knights dive into melee as well. They are anti-large once again. And instead, these Senegor now looking for an opportunity to come in with a flank alongside the Ungor Spearman herd. At the same time, these shades over here firing away at these Senegor with throwing axes, trying to get some damage in while the center has been won, more or less, by the Dark Elves. You can see the Hargoneth Executioners, though, have been absolutely punished in the center. While to the left over here, we've got the Senegor with great weapons diving in, trying to get a nice rear charge on the Cold One Knights. Both of these units of Senegor with great weapons doing a lot of work together, just bounding in onto that anti-large unit and doing a lot of hurt, especially as the Black Guard Corsairs. And a rear charge on the Dread Spears did a fair bit of damage, but of course, the Dread Spears are able to turn around and start poking and prodding at the Senegor with Grey Weapons. The Hargoneth Executioners as well now pushing into that same engagement on the left flank while the Dread Spears over here really need to push in for an engagement, but I think they're staying steady in case any cavalry decides to come out from these sides over here or over here. Just need to be very wary about what the Beastmen might be up to. And you can see over here this flanking maneuver going basically uncontested as those Cold One Knights are still engaged in this right flank engagement. So in come those Ungor Spearmen Herd and these Senegor again going wide to try and get into these shades and reduce that range support. And at the same time, you can see we have Murderous Prowess kicking in. Murderous Mastery, where applicable, of course, doing a lot of damage, continuing to hurt the Beastmen wherever possible. And you can see Malekith now chasing after the Bray Shaman of Beasts, while the Cold One Knights are dealing some damage, but also eating a fair bit of damage. They decide to pull back into safety, while another Flock of Doom goes down. And over here, we have a glorious charge coming in from the Senegor into the shades. Again, just trying to remove as much of that range support as possible, as quickly as possible. The Dread Spears on the left over here now, pushing into action, while the Dread Spears back here still still chasing after the Senegor with great weapons, while over here, again, with the center having been won, the Hargoneth Executioners are pushing in to try and provide support wherever possible. The right over here has been won by the Dark Elves, and over here, you can see we have another unit of Chaos Spawn brought in by Morgoth the Shadow Gave, of course. So they're able to, again, push in, cause a fair bit of damage, intercept these Witch Elves, maybe get them to finally give up on the fighting and remove their madness of Cain capability, while to the right over here, the Hargoneth Executioner is still giving chase to the Ungor herd over here, but of course the Senegor with Grey Weapon have uh, something to say about that as they push in for a glorious rear charge. A lot of glory in this battle, me re repeating glorious over and over again, definitely needs to be added to uh, Party Elite Bingo over here. Meanwhile, the Senegor throwing axes, tossing some axes as the Dread Spears continue to give chase, and in the center over here, you can see that rampaging on the Cold One Knights, making them virtually useless. They eat a charge from the Senegor, but a very dangerous position for them to be in, of course, as these Cold One Knights will come out on top. They are anti-large 
once again. And you can see over here now Malekith up against Morgar the Shadow Gave and the Harganeth Executioners turning around to intercept the Senegal with great weapons, hoping to hold them in place so they don't actually get too much damage into Malekith. Unfortunately, though, they're able to push right through and they get some decent work in. And Morgar the Shadow Gave, though, still in a tight spot, needs to get out of there and use his regeneration to stay alive. In the center here, though, you can see the Harganeth Executioners are largely being taken care of as the Chaos Spawn, the Gore Herd with shields, and the Ungor Herd as well, doing a fair bit of damage collectively with sheer numbers against the Witch Elves, the Harganeth Executioners, as well as the Cold One Knights. So again, very good use of quantity there over quality while we have another charge coming in from the Senegor with throwing axes. These guys can be used in melee, often ignored, I find, but in melee they can do a decent bit of damage. Of course, charging through, I think trying to remove those Harganeth Executioners or push them back so Morgor is able to get away because you can see he's taking a lot of damage both to health and to morale. And over here, these shades finally get shut down by that charge from the Senegor with great weapons and in comes a Gaze of Malice, this time actually quite effective in causing a fair bit of damage to those Senegor with great weapons. At the same time, we do have these Dread Spears peeling in, hoping to take care of those very threatening Senegor with great weapons. Again, they never get tired, and that is a huge advantage, and of course, they can do a fair bit of armor-piercing damage as well. In come the Senegor with throwing axes instead, just to finish the job over here, and they're actually able to push through into those Harganeth Executioners if they so choose, but they need to pull back and stay safe from all of those Dread Spears coming in. Meanwhile, on the right flank over here, you can see these Ungor Spearmen Herd are actually able to hold back two units of Dread Spears. They're not winning by any means, but they're able to hold the line and keep two of these units occupied, and that's extremely clever over here, because if another unit of Dread Spears was free to push around and chase after some of these Senegor with great weapons or the Senegor with throwing axes, they could get a lot more important work done. Off in the distance here as well, these Harganeth Executioners largely useless as they go running through the trees, chasing after the much faster Senegor with throwing axes and those throwing axes coming in, doing a touch of damage here and there to the Harganeth Executioners or the trees around them. Meanwhile, back up front, you can see the Bray Shaman of Beast has been badly hurt as well and is looking for an opportunity to provide some assistance while Morgor the Shadow Cave is in a terrible situation. So in come these charges from the Senegor with throwing axes again, just hoping, I think, to hold back the Harkoneth Executioners, to hold back Malekith so that Morgor is able to get out of there. He's in a very terrible spot, uses Foe Seeker, able to pop it just before he begins routing. So at least he'll have the speed ability and in comes another Soul Stealer as well. Wonderful use of Soul Stealer in a massive clump, keeping Malekith alive, but also causing a tremendous amount of damage. Look at that. Look at that balance of power shift as well. Finally in favor of the Dark Elves. They are coming out on top. Routes across the board here. Some shatters here and there as well for the Beastmen. They're having a tough time. We have a couple of Dark Elf units in a tough spot as well. For example, these Cold One Knights here giving up. We also have the uh, Dread Spears over here not having the best of times, but we do have the Senegor with great weapons now pushing in against the Shades once more, just hoping to get rid of these guys once and for all. They come in. Two units. The Senegor with throwing axes as well. Dive in and absolutely obliterate the Shades and their will to fight. The hard Harganeth Executioners once more hit by the Flock of Doom, again just trying to remove that extremely threatening unit, but the uh, Bray Shaman of Beasts has to be very careful as that Harganeth Executioner unit gives chase. So tucking into the trees over here, and the Senegor with great weapons pushing for the interception, again just tossing these Harganeth Executioners back, wonderfully done there, keeping the Bray Shaman of Beasts alive, and Morga the Shadow Gave as well, able to get away now right at the edge though, so the Beastmen are in a tough spot there as these routing units are very quickly able to just give up on the fight and leave the field. Malekith meanwhile dealing with the Senegor with throwing axes over here, and then deciding to pull away into some safety alongside these Harganeth Executioners, while over here we have these uh, throwing axes as well being tossed at the Dread Spears who are quickly closing the gap, but of course the Senegor are able to pull away and get some wonderful rear charges into these Dread Spears. A very dangerous situation to charge into, but of course with the sheer quantity, again over quality, these Dread Spears are giving up. They were held in place by these Ungor Spearmen Herd. Glorious rear charges, once again that glory there, absolutely destroying the Dread Spears and income the uh, Ungor Herd as well, just to finish the job off. And over here as well you can see these Dread Spears giving up on the fighting against the Ungor Herd who now have to deal with these Dread Spears, but in come those Senegor with great weapons. Again, charges just causing a little bit of damage to health and morale, but they do have to be careful because those spears are, of course, anti-large. The Senegor with throwing axes, meanwhile, still firing their axes away at the Harkoneth Executioners. Good call there. That is definitely the most threatening unit apart from Malekith, of course, and off in the distance here you can see Morga the Shadow Gave has, in fact, returned to the fight, and that is a major oversight from the Dark Elves. Now, you can see the balance of power is still in favor of the Dark Elves, but Morgor was right at the edge there, and just by the hair on his chinny-chin-chin, -chin, he decides to stay on the battlefield and immediately tucked into the trees. Very cleverly done there, making sure he stays hidden, is able to use his regeneration to stay alive and bring some of that health back so he can be effective later on in the battle. So again, some great foresight on display there as the Senegor with great weapons alongside the Senegor decide to not charge into these Dread Spears as Malekith comes into this situation over here, and they decide much better of it. So they pull off to the side while the Senegor with throwing axes, using basically the last of their ammunition to cause a bit of damage wherever possible. Over here, these Dread Spears do get taken care of, and at the same time, again, these Senegor with great weapons, without great weapons, with throwing axes, whatever it might be, 
they do not suffer from the loss of vigor. So right now, the Dark Elves are in a bit of a tight spot as that Gaze of Malice goes down trying to get a bit of damage in. The Dark Elves are in a bit of a tight spot because you can see all of their units are exhausted. They're not going to, or they're very tired rather I should say. So they're not going to have the best of times in a head-on engagement. They have to be very wise about how they engage. And back here the Senegal with throwing asses have used up all of their ammunition trying to get some damage in. Those Hargeneth Executioners just barely holding on to dear life that unit uh, which is fortunate for the Dark Elves because they will do a fair bit of work still if they get engaged against some infantry over here. Meanwhile, you can see Malekith needing to be very careful as the Senegor with throwing axes are able to close the gap and the Senegor with weapons as well able to close the gap and do a fair bit of damage if they get a full surround on Malekith. So he has to be very careful and he has to pull the right engagement. We also have the Brace Shaman of Beasts over here able to get maybe another cast off possibly. Maybe needs to use another Jagged Dagger there just to make sure he can get some more damage in. And all the way at the back we've got the Senegor with throwing axes willing to fight once more as well as the Ungor Spearman Herd. Not that they'll do too much work we do also have the Gorherd with shields here, bringing up the rear over here as the Senegor again up front, looking for an opportunity to dive in. But that front line of Dread Spear is now extremely threatening. They have to be very careful, decide to just tempt, bait, pull around, and try to get Malekith involved in a melee engagement where he'll get surrounded, maybe lose some morale. And off in the distance over here, you can see Foe Seeker activated on Morgur, and he decides to pull out of the trees there. Regeneration still active, still getting a little bit of his health back, so maybe a little premature there, but uh, Morgur needs to be over here to provide some morale support, I think. And you can see over here we have the Angor Herd diving in for an interception onto the Dread Spears, allowing the Senegal with Grey Weapons to dive in and get a fair bit of damage in. But Malekith comes in with a side charge right into the backs of the Senegal with Grey Weapons and take a look at that morale drop. These guys immediately giving up on the fight. They start routing right away. The Beastmen made a bit of a tough call there, a bit of a bad call as these routes and shatters are kicking into all of these units. The Dread Spears are coming out on top, and the Harganeth Executioners are able to turn around and get a nice charge into these Gorherd with shields as the Senegor try to free the uh, Ungor herd and the Senegor with great weapons back there. So they're able to free them out, pull back, and maybe come in for another cycle charge while the Harganeth Executioners do a great deal of damage to these Gorherd with shields. But those Gorherd with shields were able to hold the Harganeth Executioners in place as they shatter, allowing the Senegor with throwing axes to come in for yet another, wait for it, glorious charge, absolutely devastating the Hargoneth Executioners, but they do need to pull back as those Dread Spears are right there and able to respond. But wonderfully done though, and you can see the Dark Elves are very much coming out on top as units across the board for the Beastmen are either routing or shattering or needing to fall back. Once more, Morgan the Shadow Gave using Foe Seeker to keep his distance from Malekith because Malekith will, well, Malekith will treat him quite terribly, and uh, again, just looking for an opportunity to dive in. We've got these Senegal with throwing axes, but unfortunately they're out of ammunition, so they're not able to do anything. These Dread Spears are extremely threatening. We've got the Senegal and the Senegal with great weapons, again, diving into Malekith, hoping to get some damage in, and Malekith just caught out of position there. He still has the capability to do a fair bit of damage, but in come the Senegal with throwing axes as well, and now Malekith is in tough, very tough spot. The Dread Spears, though, able to come in with a nice rear charge, poking and prodding away at these... Uh, Beastmen units, the Senegal with great weapons come in though, and in comes a glorious chill wind as well. This massive clump over here is an ideal target for that chill wind, slowing these units down, keeping them pinned in place, causing a bit of damage, and a flock of doom comes in as well, again causing a tremendous amount of damage now to this massive clump that consists of the entire Dark Elf army. And look at health drop, look at morale drop, look at Malekith drop. His will to fight is absolutely obliterated. Morgan the Shadow Gave just barely able to stay alive over here. Malekith is not able to get out of this full surround. Round. The Dread Spears, the Hargoneth Executioners giving up on the fights. In comes another rear charge from the Senegor with great weapons. The Dread Spears now have given up. Down goes Malekith. Down go the Dark Elves. A valiant defeat. I don't know where to begin with summarizing that battle. Amazing use, or rather I should say glorious use of cavalry from the Beastmen excellent micromanagement from the Dark Elves. It was really at times about quantity over quality, but that's quantity of units. The quality of play at this level is always intense to watch, and it was a very close battle going back and forth right until the death. But ultimately, the Beastmen and Clashtland Soothsayer took the day. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more Total War content and keep sending in those battle replays. I do think it's one of the best ways to learn, and it's always nice to see some great battles from the community. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.